So what do we have today? Today we're going to talk about how to store your pictures. Let's focus on that. Hey everybody, welcome to After Chat. I am Tom. And I'm Ryan. And today we're talking about how to handle your files once you've taken your picture. Because we've handled plenty about up to taking your picture and pressing the shutter. But what do you do after you press the shutter? to protect your files, to move your files. Basically, the life cycle of that file once you are uh, once you press that shutter. Mm -hmm. As well as what you need to do before taking the picture to not screw yourself later. Yes, that is actually where we want to start because that is very, very important. What don't you want to do to start with? Yeah. Now, the first thing you want to do is not buy a 2 gig SD card. Yeah. Uh, generally, any any form of media should store more pictures than you could ever conceive of taking at one time. Now, there's a lot of people who don't don't follow that method, and they prefer smaller cards. That oh, I don't prefer smaller cards. I just well, no, like take, you use 32s. I use 64s. <laughs> oh, I, and I, I still fill them. Oh, a lot of photographers don't like to use 64s because they put all your eggs in one basket, and it's too this many pictures true. on one card. I never, I actually very rarely take more than 32. I I don't I. I use a pair of 64s in my D600. It writes raw to both of them, so that's redundant. Meaning that there's one copy of each file in each card. If one dies or goes missing, I have another copy. Yep. Uh, I use SanDisk Extreme Pro 45 megabit, so the next, not even the normal Extreme Pro, but the next one up, they're, they're not that expensive. They're not, no, they're actually, not the top of the line cards, but they work. They're very reliable. See, I use Sony Golds, which are have been very reliable as yeah, long as I've been like using them. Yeah, 30 megabit a second they're, or something like that. No, they're 40. They're just not 45s. I thought they were lower than 40. No, they're 40s. What? And I usually get about 42 on them. The one, the one place that I, I need the 64 is I, I shoot weddings. So I, I will use one 64 gig card for a whole wedding. I won't overrun it ever, almost. And that lets me not have to change cards, which introduces its own thing of having multiple cards with stuff you need on them around, which is a little scary. But. Yeah, no, that gets to be a little scary. The only time I've ever actually filled the 64 gig card was when I was shooting the festival mm -hmm. back in June. And even then, at the end of the night, I had my laptop there and the external hard drive, and I just didn't want to lose them, so I was dumping them down. But I would fill up a 64 gig card there, and then some. I So I, I write two cards, which... I would if I could. That's the thing. If you have a camera capable of doing it, which is... Nikon 600, 610, 800, 810, and the D series up from three. almost all of them. Three? I think it's, yeah, it must be yeah. three. Three, 3S, four, 4S. And then Canon side, the 5D3 has. 5D2, 5D3, yeah. and all of the ones. Nikon, the 7000 series, an exact copy of the 610 with a larger sensor. So they're the same exact camera, just with a bigger sensor. So if you have the ability to write two cards, you should almost always be shooting two copies of RAW. I've never had a card die. I've never had an SD card go with pictures I need on it. I've never had a corrupted file, really, on an SD card. Yeah. I've, I've shot hundreds and hundreds of thousands of pictures on SD cards, and I've never had that problem. But I still shoot two copies. Oh, But you're still shooting RAW? Don't you only get, like, eight pictures on your card? I get 1,100 or so, <laughs> which is a lot of pictures. Yeah, it's, as you say, you should be shooting two cards, two good quality SanDisk, Lexar, Sony, and that's about it. That's about it. Um, Patriot was all right. They, they made, I don't know if they still make cards, but they used to. I actually like their equipment, but you don't screw around with, like, Transcend, especially. I, oh, God, I'm, I'm scared them. of their cards. Just the, Transcend and Baron Flash. Yeah. Actually, we've had no problems with that card, except for the fact that it's only two gigs. Yeah, I'm not. It's only used in the audio recorder. We also haven't written that much to it. That's, that's true. Um, so that's your first place where you can add redundancy. If you have the capability, do it. So shoot yeah. two cards. Yeah. Point one is buy good cards. Point two is if you can shoot redundant, shoot redundant. And I know some people who, although they can't shoot redundant, cards, they'll shoot raw and JPEG just in case a file gets corrupt. I don't. I don't see the point. That's a little weird. Yeah, I wouldn't do that. But That doesn't really make a lot of sense. But that, uh, you know, the people who are doing it that I know, because they have, you know, rebels which only take one card, but they're, they want to make sure they get it. And I'm like, okay. And they're like, well, what if something goes wrong with my raw file? I have a JPEG. I'm like, 
if something goes wrong right. with your rough file, it's probably going to take out most of that card yeah. at the same time. But hey, more one, power to them. One they file just... is generally not the thing that goes on an SD card, but yeah. it's usually the whole card. So especially if you have one card, you want to look at being redundant as soon as possible mm -hmm. after that. Yes, and that, this is where we move on to stage two of getting the card out of your camera. I recommend a card reader. I don't recommend doing it over the USB cable from your camera. Yeah, I've... I used to do it all the time with my Rebel, and A, it is insanely slow. Your camera is not USB 3, and you are going to be moving tons and tons of data. So, the 800s are, but... Well, but they're brand new. Well, 800, 800, 800 but isn't. But I, the 600 should be, but it isn't. Yeah. Um, using a good card reader saves you a lot of hassle. Um, pay the $25 instead of 18 or 15 so, Kingston, Kingston is generally the good kind of card reader to buy. So we can speak from experience in the studio. <laughs> yeah. I, One of I us spent, bought the Rosewell. Oh, well, no, I spend five minutes. Get it. it still works. It works just as fast and as, as well as soon as it connects, which sometimes takes a minute or two. And I just never spend money on another one because the one I have works. And I went and bought the Kingston one based on what you, you did because you told me to. And, and I heeded that advice and spent the extra 10 bucks and bought the Kingston one. you pull one. the card and it always works. It which always works. It always works perfectly. I have to fuck with mine constantly. Hey. So an internal card reader is a terrible idea. We talked about this at some point with uh, people who did this. I've done this in the past because they're cheap and it's nice to have it on the computer. But if something goes wrong with a card reader, you have to unplug it and plug it back in to let the computer recognize it again. If it's stuck inside your computer, that's a pain in the ass. That means opening your case, pulling it out, putting it back in. Which doesn't always work as well because it's, yep. it's not seen the same way as an external it, USB. Uh, There's good reason to be paranoid about not buying cheap cards and to shoot redundant as soon as possible. It's, it's like buying cheap tires for a car that you know are going to fail at some point. It, it's the thing that you're using that has all of your important data on it. So before you process, it's a very, very important little piece link in the chain that if you don't put the quality into it, you're going to pay for it. Deep. Having a decent card reader just saves you a little bit of time and annoyance. But the moment it's in the computer, then you have to deal with your file handling. Yes. There's different ways to have redundancy with files the moment that they enter the computer. With Lightroom, you can have Lightroom write a second copy to a second location if you wanted to. Yep. Or you can... So there's different physical media to do this. You can have a second hard drive entirely copying the one that you're copying to. You can have a box, which raids itself. If you use RAID with multiple hard drives, there's redundancy and a fault tolerance, where if you lose one hard drive, it's not going to lose the pictures on the hard drive. You lose a day recovering them, but you don't lose the, the data. Exactly. That's So big studio... Uh, I work, work for somebody who shoots two or three weddings a weekend, 70 weddings a year about, and they have 60 or 70 terabytes worth of RAID 5 storage. So there, there's six or seven to eight to ten four bay RAID boxes, and each one of those has two or three terabyte drive in it. And should one of those drives fail, which happens occasionally, yep. you take it out, put another one in, and RAID 5 especially will rebuild that hard drive. You don't have to worry about losing pictures. So that, that's a good solution if you can afford buying a dedicated RAID solution. Yep. They're very good. Drobo makes ones that are a little bit easier to use. They're more expensive and kind of Apple-like, where they'll, they'll shortcut stuff and not tell you what they're doing. But Drobo makes nice consumer-ready yeah. RAID equipment. You know, there, there's ways to do this internally. You can have a mirrored hard drive. Um, one thing, I learned this taking a, a server course way back in the day when I was... When, uh, on most servers, and I do this on all my desktops, I always have since I learned this, um, if, you, if you're storing critical data on one drive, do not have it be the same drive that you run all your programs off of. Uh, that way you have a level of fault tolerance there. You can have the computer crash and have that second drive be just fine. Mm -hmm. um, and then in that case, you mirror that drive. Now you have two copies no matter what that are always up to date. Um, I don't do that with the mirrored hard drive, but what I do have is an external hard drive. Actually, I have two of them at this point. Um, that every night I write a backup to the external hard drive. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an incremental backup, but it can be recovered very easily. Yeah, I use um, so I don't I don't have enough data moving in not to have a RAID justify paying a bunch of money for RAID box yet. I have a three terabyte internal which gets backed up via like just the Seagate normal, which is terrible software, but it works. Yeah, the same with um, the 
Well, it the just, internal Windows one isn't much better, but it, it's very functional. I, yeah, it just gets backed up whenever it feels like it. It continually backs up to an external three terabyte, which I can yank and take if I need to. The, the one thing that some people do, which is a little bit crazy and old school, but it's a good idea if you shoot weddings a lot, is uh, write to optical, is to actually write Blu-ray out. It's a bit of effort, it might be five or six Blu-rays, but you have a physical hard copy of your raw files that you never have to worry about losing. So no matter what happens to any number of hard drives, you always have a hard Blu-ray copy. Yeah. Which is nuts, it's a little pricey, but it's pound for pound, it's about the same as hard drive space at this point. So yeah, it's interesting. It's another way to do it. If you're not doing optical, and if you're not, even if you are doing a second hard drive, a lot of people are choosing to use cloud services to update at least the very most important pictures that they have, their portfolio pieces, their their certain raw files and all this sort of things. So yeah, having an offsite backup is a very important part of that. Yeah, offsite backup used to mean, now I'm gonna be dating myself here, old, well, as old, taking a tape or an external hard drive in more recent time and actually physically removing it with you when you left the studio. Part of that, the whole plan of having an external mirror drive is to take it with you. Yes. Um, but I mean, like, they, I don't. Like, they there should. are, but like, when you're talking about big collections, like, they're taking that tape and putting it in, like, a lo like a safety deposit box overnight in case something happens. And mm -hmm. that's, I mean, that's way old school, but it's still being done. But it, the tapes but, are fun. I, I, I almost want my boss to be to write off the tape and then store that. Just it's it, the they, amount they of hold data. Huge amounts of data. The amount of data that he has just sitting on hard drives that isn't used constantly is should be written off the tape. The problem is that a tape system is so expensive to start. Yeah. It's just a super expensive thing to start doing. Yeah. But nowadays we have like you said, we have the cloud storage. We can back up. I mean at this point with, with like uh what does Amazon call theirs? The glacier or something like that? I miss that. I thought it was just Amazon Cloud, but no, no, no. They have like a they, they call it the deep, deep storage, deep storage, where you actually send them, um, you send them hard drives you've written all your files to. They download it's they apparently they claim it's faster to send them the hard drive. Like you buy a hard drive, like a like a four terabyte hard drive, or several of them if you need them. You FedEx them the hard drives. They download them into a server, and then send you the drives back. And apparently that's still faster than transferring the data when you're talking about that level, that much data that you're working with. And then you get it access to your Amazon cloud. You pay for it. Um, I'm sure. You pay quite a bit. It's something ridiculous, like $9 like, uh, for like 100 every 100 gigs or something. But it's on their cloud forever. Mm -hmm. And that seems like pretty awesome kind of backup. You know, I mean, it's offsite. You still have access to it, but now it's in the cloud. Yep. Which, granted, I mean, I use Microsoft's OneDrive to move things around between computers because it acts like a hard drive local to the computer, even though it's the cloud. But there was an art article in Ars Technica that today, it actually was today that this came out, that apparently there's a provision in the Stored Communications Act that says overseas records must be disclosed domestically when a valid subpoena order or warrant compels their production. The disclosure of search records has never been considered tantamount to a physical search under the Fourth Amendment principles. So if you store stuff in the cloud and they can tell what cloud service you're using, they can get a subpoena for it whether you're there or not. This particular it's case that's brought this about, this fi the files are actually stored on a server in Ireland. So they actually are trying to get Microsoft to give it up. But there have been other cases that this is, this is referencing that they've basically gone into the, you know, to the company that owns your cloud storage and said, we have a subpoena, give us the files. And you know, they were saying, yep, Fourth Amendment doesn't apply here. Illegal search and seizure for those of us who uh, forgot our civics classes. Now, lucky for you, the companies who own the clouds are fighting this still. So they're not yeah. giving up the data. They're still fighting it in the courts. You wonder where it's actually been applied. Is that that's but the wording in that especially leads it to believe that it's not actually applied very often. It doesn't sound like it is just because or ever really. Like there might be a handful of times in those include international interest. Well, mostly right? like to this point, the the referenced ones 
all have to do with people committing fraud or who they think are storing their drug deal records on in the cloud. And photos. Just, those and, are fun stories. Yeah. That deserve it. So, I, I just, I mean, obviously I'm not one to go fear-mongering because I use the cloud. I don't think twice about it. So obviously, if you're not doing anything, I, I'm of the mentality if you're not doing anything wrong, there's nothing to worry about. It's not that there's nothing to worry about. There's plenty to there's worry plenty about. There's plenty to worry but about, but I try to think that way so I don't stress myself out. Practical, practical overstepping versus theoretical overstepping are two very different things. Yeah. It's and this feels like a lot of the latter at the moment. But it's a it's a good thing to be watching very carefully. Yeah. So this is something I'll be watching because I store stuff in the cloud and because I'm always worried about backing up my data somewhere. Maybe I'll buy a tape drive. No. I got the old computer. It needs something to do. It's either going to be a tape drive or a RAID box. I like external RAID USB boxes, but no, that'll be network attached RAID. Yeah, I, I prefer external boxes that are just RAID boxes for myself. But okay, I just want an excuse to go buy 16 terabytes worth of hard drive space. It's not that much now. I know it's just four four terabyte drives. Or I could do it as eight two terabyte drives and make it a RAID six. No. 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 Okay. Yeah, my my PC is it's like he's like I said setting up your stores differently. Mine is two three gig photo drives, a one twenty gig system drive, and a two fifty gig programs drive. So it's it's all sort of segmented. There's lots of ways to take care of your files. It's just that you're super paranoid and mindful about it at all times. Yeah, that's that's, that's, that's the big that's the point. that's the biggest key thing. Be super paranoid. Know where your extra, your backup copies are. And one thing we didn't point out when we were talking about SD cards, and this drives me absolutely nuts, don't just store things on SD cards. Oh, yeah. Also, don't drop them, which is a, basically yeah, the side. That's, that's the that. basic reason. is it's, SD cards have the ability to erase themselves. Basically. Uh, if they're dropped the wrong way, I know so many people... Mostly because they only use point and shoots, but then they get upset when like they have like 900 SD cards because they filled them up. They're like, oh, it's on, it's on one of these, it's on one of these. I'm like, download them to your computer, please. Yeah, that's the Lightroom is a very cheap and powerful thing. Uh, Ten bucks a month now for Lightroom and Photoshop. Seriously, you you, it lets you catalog everything. You could add tags, you can geotag it. Yeah, the moment you you're could, downloading pictures on a regular basis, you need to be yeah, they need to be pretty much using Lightroom all the time. Oh, well, one thing we, we didn't cover. When should you finally wipe cards off your SD card, or do you just keep buying oh. new ones? I only erase... So I, I have pairs of SD cards. I will import one and have the other one until I need it, basically. I will keep it as long as I can until I don't need it anymore. So I will not ever erase files until they're stored and backed up and in two places on the desktop. And even then, I will keep the backed up SD card until I need to wipe it. Since I don't write two SD cards, uh, I do cycle between two 64s Makes and, sense. and a pair of 32s I also happen to have, if I get that far. And I will wipe one only after I know it's gone to my hard drive and the external backup. Mm -hmm. Then I'm okay erasing the card, which usually you know it backs up every night, so it's 24 hours. And then usually it stays longer just because I'm switching cards because I pull one out, I put the other one in the camera and erase it. So unless I'm shooting both of them in a day, it's usually as soon as it goes in the camera, I format. And I always format in the camera, not just delete all the files off. So that's us talking about backing stuff up. And if you have any questions for us, please let us know. If you have anything you'd like us to explain how we do it so you can do it better or you think you can do it better than us, put it in the comments. We want to hear about it. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank <laughs> you.